there, we're doing a pre-flight check on our uh, latest acquisition. Uh, yes, it's a, a Lister Model D stationary engine, something we've wanted for a long time, and uh, finally succumbed. And it was running last autumn, so uh, we're just tinkering around a bit, and uh, some of these spanners haven't been used for 25 years, and I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't get rid of them. So we'll just squib a bit of oil into the rockers because it's greased from a thing on the side. You can turn that up as well. And of course we need to check the oil. I've unscrewed this. Actually the, uh, the wing nut is the studs come out. But there's plenty of oil in it. Uh, of course Crankcase could be full of water with the oil floating on top, but I don't think that's the case. And of course, there's a definite procedure. I've tightened all the, any loose bolts on the dolly uh, and that, that sort of thing. But as regards actually um, starting it up, there's a very good video by Steam Wally on YouTube. And I've got a paper here with all the things that you have to do and the order in which you do them. There's a, there's a drop of petrol in it, which I'm sure is still all right and then we can put some water in and uh, fill it to within three inches of the top according to the instructions. Oh, hang on a second. We'd better shut the drain cock. The drain cock was open. <laughs> Slightly too much. Uh, the next thing is to oil the governor wick, that's this 5 16th wick plug here, and not with it. This is motor oil, that's what it is. I don't know how much you put in, that should do. And then there's an oil hole below. Few drops of oil through here onto the uh, magneto chain. This is the rocker greaser. I haven't actually got any grease, uh, and of course the plug. Now I, I have uh, checked, and there is a spark, not terribly fat, but I checked that before I thought of making the video. So it's essential. This, and I haven't cheated, you know. Uh, no, I mean I haven't cheated and already started it and made sure it works all right. This is all genuine footage. Yeah, the, the, the petrol tap, the petrol cock was rather stiff and I'm not sure uh, whether we're getting, there's a curl in the fuel line which is below the level of the tank. I'm not sure whether it's getting through to the float chamber, but let's have a go anyway. Now the mixture control, fully anti-clockwise, gets, and that's it, let's uh, see what happens. take it to compression and it goes this way doesn't it um. I don't think the juice is getting through to the carburetor a little. Um, we've dropped off, we've drained the tank, dropped off the fuel line, which is fine. Um, the, but the, the, the cock is completely seized up. Um, I've cleaned the thread here, that blue looks like silicone or something, that's all right, we'll probably get some PTFE. The, air, uh, the petrol filter looks a bit grotty but it's fine. Um, and it was never going to run anyway because I took the little plug off the top of the float chamber and it's as dry as a bone, so there's no petrol got in it. So um, I wonder if a squib of WD-40 might work. Uh, it's okay now. It's, 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 it's very stiff, but it's working. 
and of course it does need to be quite stiff because petrol's got a very low surface tension and it can seep through things can't it. We've uh, put the petrol pipe back and put some TTFE tape around the unions. Cock's working all right now we think and we've got some fresh juice and put it in. So uh, let's switch on the petrol which should now run through into the float chamber. Ah, yes it is, because now you can hear, you can hear the, I'm sure you can hear the float sort of bobbing up and down. Usually it comes out the top, doesn't it? Yes, I think we're in business now, so that's fully anti-clockwise, so uh, let's try again. Okay, well, persistence wins. Well, it's a different day, different coloured shirt. It's Friday, it was Wednesday before, and the uh, list is still not running. But uh, you know what we did, uh, rather than uh, flog away at it, was to, uh, you have to ask the question, why, you know, why um, wouldn't it go? Now, the clue lay in the fact that I said in the first bit that the, the magneto was working, but the spark didn't sound very fat, and that's because I only heard it. I didn't see it because I put the plug by the um, casing and turned it, and I could hear a tick, 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 but it didn't sound very impressive. Uh, and so when the thing wouldn't fire, uh, then the, uh, the ignition uh, fell under suspicion. So I took the plug out, grounded it properly, and looked at it and examined it closely while turning the engine, and it was very strange. The, the spark was long and threaded, and it was not going from the central electrode to the shoe, or the foot of the sparking plug. Um, it, was, it was coming off the insulator and sort of making its way round. It was very thin and thready. Um, and the insulator was covered in soot, so I cleaned it, and no matter how much I cleaned it, the spark would not come in the proper place from the end of the central electrode to the shoe. Um, so we've ordered another one, because there's obviously something wrong with that plug. Perhaps the uh, insulator uh, is cracked, I don't know. The resistance of it is about 4,000 ohms, that's DC resistance, that's all right. So um, we're pretty sure that, uh, you know, we are a bit impatient to get the plug because it's not the sort of plug you can just go into your local Halfords and, and find on the wall, but uh, we'll see what happens when it arrives. To save time, um, I'm going to jump to some live video and explain what happened. First the sparking plug came, the new one, and we tried it out. So we tested the magneto, I'll show you, and I get something terribly wrong. We've been fiddling in the magneto and we now are quite happy that the magneto itself is working. Well of course I'm talking through my hat. I mean, it's sparking, but it, it should go tick, tick, tick with every revolution of the flywheel. Um, so it's not doing that. So we eventually did what we should have done first, uh, which is to actually clean the points with very fine emery stick, but get all rid of all the dust. And uh, that was one big step in the right direction. The points are closed. Rotate the flywheel till they open like so, on the highest part of the... and it should be 12, 10, 10 to 12 thou and it's, uh, it's quite a lot bigger than that so uh, we'll adjust it. Well this is a nice chunky piece of copper wire with many strands but I don't think it's uh, the proper HT lead so we've put a, we've fitted um, some proper stuff. 
Well, we did a lot of things backwards, but um, in the end, uh, it started to bear fruit. Uh, well, it's promising. Ah, well, <laughs> there's, uh, you probably can't see, there's a piece of coke stuck between the plugs points, uh, so I mean it's the coke dropping off inside. Well at this point we're going to get a bit concerned if there's a, a rain of bits of uh, carbonised stuff falling down into the valve seats. That wasn't going to be much fun was it? But um, Fortune was with us as you will now see. I think we've cracked it now. Metaphorically. well that ends well and we did some things in the right order I can went on about we must do things logically well I didn't entirely do that but we got there in the end and there are a couple of minor points um, the, the one of the problems w was this the needle valve um, it's not in too good of shape um, it's been dressed or even machined but it's a little bit I mean it's still sharp but it's a little bit sort of wobbly at the end this means that it's letting more juice through so that even, you know, that when that engine began to run uh, evenly, more or less evenly, that was marked on the disc stop. So when we were doing the recommended setting of having the disc almost one revolution open, that was why it kept flooding all the time. It was just too much juice getting through. Um, so that's good. And the other point is, yes, we did adjust the tappets. I can't remember when we did that. And it's interesting because McBurney, in his super book, um, says the tappet clearance is 31 thou. Um, but the Lister manual, uh, curiously, says um, 5 to 10 thou, which is really little. So I don't I'll have to see. I set them big. But uh, that's quite curious. Anyway, uh, there we go. And the next stage, I suppose, will be to find something for the engine to power.